Hey, let me pull this stuff down. You guys have your predictions for for what the total will be, the wins and losses. Do you think it's more likely that we go seven and five or eleven and one? I'll go first, eleven and one. I know Matt's gonna say seven and five. <laughs> I know. That's kind. Of, I figured that it would probably be split between you guys. Look, look we're pretty. Look, we are. We truly are a parody of ourselves. I mean, we. It's like. You kind of know when you ask a question. Matt Matt always proves me wrong. That's the worrying part. But, um, you know, uh, I, I think I, I have just as hard a time thinking that we only really have one loss. This is a really difficult schedule. It's not – and then the way it's set up, it's not really set up to be successful. If I had to be honest, we want to spend time on the schedule. We should probably do that sometime before the season starts, maybe next week. But, I, I mean, five losses, though? I mean, I was. I remember I looked at the FBI, know, and, and maybe I'm not giving the the I'm not giving the credit to some of the the the, the teams uh, out there in the Big Ten because we're, we're we're facing. I know everyone focuses on the Big Four, but there are there are some football teams and some proud programs that we're going up against this year. Um, but I mean, wow, you know, it's it's so hard to say seven and five or eleven and one when we have not seen these players in this defense. You know, I, I again, I know it's chicken shit, but. Really, I, I'm, not, I'm being honest with that. If this defense is everything that I think it is, that's why I'm saying more. I'm not saying we're going 11 to one, but if this defense is what I think it is. I just don't see five teams outscoring the Trojans this year. That's my rationale. Matt, what are your thoughts? I don't see the defense playing poorly enough that five losses are going to accumulate against uh, less than spectacular offenses. And like, you know, Marcus Freeman at North, and I, I went on record earlier in this show saying that Notre Dame is one of the losses, you know, along with uh, Michigan. That said, it's not as though I, I would say Notre Dame's any sort of lock to beat USC. I mean, like I'd lean toward Notre Dame, but Marcus Freeman has a heck of a lot to prove this year. And Notre Dame's offense has a heck of a lot to prove this year. And that game's at the Coliseum. So it's hardly... Uh, a shoe in for the Irish. You know, Tim mentioned that the Notre Dame and Penn State games are both at home. So, in order for USC to lose five, man, like, well, first off, like every close game is going to have to go the wrong way. That that's one, and and second, like the, the defense is going to fall short of being top forty, in my mind. Uh, you know, one of the things Phil Steele said is that you know. He felt that the USC secondary was like around a top 50 secondary or so. And I pressed him on that. I said, hey, don't you think that Doug Belk and Taylor Mays uh, are going to significantly raise the ceiling for that secondary? And, and Phil said, and he's not wrong here, but Matt, do you realize just how absolutely awful they were last year? So in other words, Phil Steele and some other pundits are saying the floor was so low last year that the ceiling can only be so high for USC this year. But in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking that the floor is already a lot higher because of the new uh, defensive staff. And so if you've put that question to me, yeah, I'm not saying 11 and one, like I'm on record nine and three, but I would put, turn, move the needle more toward 11 and one than seven and five. I just cannot see uh, five losses beyond the obvious, which is, the defensive and offensive lines just get absolutely uh, swarmed by injuries, like a book of Job, you know, like season uh, for the offensive and defensive let's lines. Uh, yeah, of that's the, that. that's the only. That's the only way we get five losses, really, if the two lines just get absolutely decimated by injuries. That's the key. Is it is both is is both lines saying? I mean, all all bets go out. Uh, we know that we have talent. And, it, and I'll go back to what I'm saying that was making me more bullish is because the more and more I'm seeing um, the, the, the likelihood of these young guys being, I'm not saying ready to shine and, 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 you know, ball out like they're ready to go to the college football playoffs, but I'm just saying supporting, like giving guys, this team, good quality reps, late in games, getting the, these guys um, some breaks. And, you know, these guys are so talented, you know, stepping up and making a play. By the way, we got, you got to stop leaving out, uh, Bookie Radley Hiles, when you talk about the secondary, he's also in there putting some work in too. That secondary is again, we keep talking about on the show. We, Matt, we're gonna look like geniuses going all the way back to like you know, January, or <laughs> we're gonna have egg on our faces. But you know what? That's the fun part about the offseason, and, and we're gonna find out all about it, you know, very, 
very, very soon. I think you guys are going to look smart. I feel like there's probably 10 guys that are starter level talent. And it's just trying to can pick who's going to go out there to start every game. I mean, I feel like we have one of the deeper defensive backfields in the entire country. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, well, I mean, top end talent front, you know, start. And I did say also, man, our 22 against, against anybody on, R22 against anybody's 22 overall. You take the whole team and you take the 22 against their 22. I know that Michigan has a great defense. We talked about earlier, but you know, look at our, look at our, look at our offense. You know, I think you take the overall 22 against 22 and, and I, I don't see, that's why I keep talking. I don't see a, oh, well, how are we going to beat this team? There's here's, here's our loss. Uh, I'm, I'm with Matt. There are games with lean towards like, wow, that's gonna be some uphill tough sledding, but I'm not counting this team out especially without seeing how well they're going to perform on the field. So, good point. Anything else yep. for us? Uh, just to touch on that, I feel like we're closer to 11-1. and one. Uh, I'm more confident against Michigan and LSU, whereas a lot of people think that like LSU will be the one of the top two or three hardest games on the schedule. Yeah, it's up there, but I mean, they are going to have a lot to – lot to do to replace 2,500 yards of receiving that went to the draft and to Jaden Daniels. I don't think their secondary will be able to keep up with our receivers. Yeah, two first-round receivers. And and, and the, what was Daniels, number three overall or number two? What was he? He was up there. Two. Two. Yeah, so, two. so, I mean, that's a lot. You know, and pe- people keep pointing to, to Kayla. Actually, I heard the other way around. They're like, well, you know, LSU lost this and lost that. I'm like, yeah, well, we, we lost some guys too. So, I mean, it's. Matt's done a great job of talking about how these two teams absolutely mirror each other. And then he emphasized the point. How is one 10, 11 spots higher on a, on a poll uh, based on that? And it's just, again, it's, it's just absurd and people, people hanging on to some narratives, but uh, great call, Christian really, really appreciate you. Did you have a quick uh, one more question for us or are you good to go? Yeah, I'll leave a quick one. Um, do you think that USC will be more attractive if college football moves to more of a cal- salary cap model? Yeah. So the salary cap is going to level it out. Then my answer is yes, because all the, all the intrinsic, all, all the things that USC has going for USC location, education. Um, I'm sorry. I know you, everyone's points to, they got so many homeless out there. You know, our weather is like Matt and I was talking about. Yeah. You know, you get it. I'm talking, I'm complaining about 90 degree weather, you know, where in other parts of the country are screened about, you know, hundred degrees and, and like 90% humidity or in Matt's case, 120 degrees and like 1% humidity. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think that that will absolutely, you, you, that's what always been USC's draw is, is, is that is, is, is location and, and, you know, being close to being close to LA. Now, again, that does work against you. There are some guys that they just don't want the big lights, big city. But I, I have to believe that that's the that's the not the the average. And now in this age of NIL, because remember, when there's a salary cap, that doesn't get rid of NIL. And so therefore, if you have the salary cap kind of idea, uh, and and then you have people able to get real NIL to prove that, hey, listen, uh, I can go out and be a spokesperson for this, and they will legitimately give me, you know, I can, I can do some uh, Beats by Dre and and, and make like a million dollar contract or this sports drink or or this or whatever. I can go out and do these things. And 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 get real nil. Well, you know, being the big fish, and and uh, Caleb showed that if you're the big fish in a big pond, and LA is a big pond, uh, it could be a very lucrative position for you. So yes, yes, and yes. Sweet, great job, Christian. Thank you so much for calling in. All right, appreciate you a lot. Thank you, appreciate it. Fight on. Have a good one. Fight on, Christian. I'm just kind of j- jacked and excited that the new college football season is upon us. Yeah, this, this has been a right for Trojan. Yeah, next to Trojan players, I think it's been the longest, longest offseason for Trojan fans because uh, you know I don't think anyone from from the groundskeepers to to Lincoln Riley are happy with how last season ended, and that that does lead to a very long offseason. But man, Menji, I'm I'm right there with you. I'm ready to go. What's on your mind? Well, I'm just I'm just listening to all these talking heads. Paul Feinbaum, um, you listen to some other stations, over and under, UFC 5.5. LSU's going to blow USC out. USC has no chance. I'm, 
I just coming off the mystic, I just have a feeling we're gonna have a great season. I think SC's gonna make the playoffs. They're gonna blow the lid off LSU. You watch. I I just think something's brewing. Something's going on. I think we just won a national That's not, championship. I want to say. Man, Jeet, I'm with you. Listen, I'm pumped up. I got pumped up last week. Uh, there is no reason why. When I look at this schedule, there I look on this literally. Uh, everyone, I think we're heavy underdogs. According again, taking what's worth it's ESPN. Uh, underdogs in their FBI. I, I I read through it. Um, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's a premium article or not, but you should check it out. Uh, it's really well done by Chris Trino over at two four seven. Just goes down breaking down the the different um, odds of winning that game and uh, the the two longest um, underdogs that we are is you know at Michigan and believe it or not. Penn State, in our, no, no, is it Penn State in our house? They're way up there as well. But also, and then you have a Notre Dame in our house. So they got they got USC as pretty big underdogs to Penn State and to um, to uh, Penn State and Notre Dame in our Notre house. Dame. Yeah, but how? We, 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 yeah, I, talent for talent, player for player. I don't get it. Michigan just lost their head coach. Quarterback is gone. Penn, Penn State's always a letdown. Franklin can't win. Jack, we're gonna beat them easily. And LSU, you watch. We're gonna blow blow the top off LSU. I I can't say Notre Dame either. We're gonna be in the playoffs. You watch, brother. I just have a feeling. Uh, and, and and once that happens, all the all the recruits are gonna start coming. They're gonna start pouring in. You watch. They're already coming. <laughs> They're already coming. Come on, but you gotta keep keep an I'm eye out. About the the Terry, the big five star studs, the Terry's and all those guys that be committed. They're gonna come back. Well, it would be it would be great to welcome back some guys. Um, it's a new age in recruiting. You never know, right? Let's all say you never know until the fat lady sings. You never know until that last bag drops sometimes. But um, I think a lot of the guys that we've lost recently, and all joking aside, has a lot to do with they just want to wait and see, like you're saying right now. And if USC does it on the field, there's absolutely no reason exactly. why these guys yeah, won't change their minds. I mean, I, I think... Exactly my point. Yeah. But... No, I'm just saying that's that's, that's it's, the, it's how the season plays out, right? It's how the season plays out. If I, I think if I if it's gonna play out the way I think it's gonna play out, we're gonna be probably eleven and one. I say eleven and one, maybe yeah. twelve and zero. I'm call me optimistic. I, I think we just won the national championship. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, let's, defense, let's, I'm telling you, the deep, defense that defense hey, is gonna show up. I, it's I, not gonna be the same bridge defense. I, I want you to be absolutely right on this, 100. percent But I, but I will say, let's 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 ease into this. Let's let's look, let's let's you and me. Let's look at the let's look at the end of the third quarter and how we're feeling. I I know I know that's going to give us our snapshot. I do, because uh, all the teams on our schedule, Matt, are very flawed. Sorry, wrong word, not very. Take that out. There are flaws. There are significant flaws to each one of the teams. We're we're not playing, you know, a, a, a team on our schedule. That is just coming into this season. I'm going, oh man, how are we going to win this game? You know, uh, if the game, uh, Michigan fans out there, if the game was at a neutral site or if it was at the Coliseum, I'd be a lot more bullish on that game. But even that game, I I'm going to tell you, you know, it's not like USC's mailing in. I was listening, by the way, if you guys aren't watching over uh, TJ and the guys at the on the Collins show uh, over at the Voice College Football Michigan. Uh, he misquoted me a bit. He got you, Matt. Matt, you are calling that that they're going to win. I'm still holding. I'm going to wait on that. Um, I think that USC can play in that game. I'm not. I'm not cashing that one in as a loss yet. Uh, I do think that uh, the oh, it's Michigan. I, I think. Well, hold on a second. Michigan, I, who does Michigan really have? Michigan has nobody. They, <laughs> they've got a very good defense. They got probably some of the best defensive interior yeah, guys so. that you're going to find anywhere. They probably have a better. They may have one of, the, if not the best defense in the country this year. So be careful man, man, about. Man, man. Man, no matter, but I, you know what? But our the offense is not the issue. We're going to put up 30 points. Let them with. I'm with you on that. Matt's not. Matt's thinking less yeah, than so 21. I'm saying 21 or plus. We still have that little side bet going, Matt. Yeah, man, G. I mean, I say, I see, we can call beat, on, G. Go ahead, Matt. Man, G, we can beat Michigan, but it's really going to require smothering Michigan's offense. Like, I, I, you might have uh, thought that. Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, you know, said that USC should just stack the box and and dare uh, Michigan to throw. He's probably right. I mean, certainly in the first quarter of that game, USC has to dare Michigan to throw the ball down the field. And if Michigan can't throw, that be, that becomes a really tough game uh, for Michigan's offense. But Michigan has a top 
three, four defensive line in the country. And, and, and USC faces a real, uh, a very steep test uh, in terms of its offensive personnel going up against that fire breathing uh, Michigan defense in the big house. Like that's, that's going to be a test, but USC can certainly win the game. If it shuts down Michigan's offense, gets a couple turnovers, like that's an obvious path to victory, but that Michigan defense is for real. Uh, Matt, I'm highly offended. I, I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the sun God. I know I'm not like one of the highest paid receivers in NFL. I know I didn't come here and just have the best hands that USC seen in a hell of a long time. And, and a technician is a route runner. But I literally said that I said, we're going to stack the box and make this Michigan team throw. I feel like, you know, I don't know what Sue Craven was talking about in his Instagram, uh, I was I mean, a uh, message, but he's talking about how he called something a long time ago. And, and then it was being attributed to other people. Not like it's not, by the way, not that neither one of our ideas is like that outside the box. I'm sure that's how you get attack. Um, Michigan's going to get attacked all season, but I'm telling you, I said that you know, months but, ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, guys, the Michigan's down the road. Let's take it one game at a time. I'm going to call you after we blow out, uh, blow out LSU. Let's take it one game at a time. Oh man, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm excited. Uh, appreciate Manjeet. Thank you for the call, and we will talk after every game. Hope you're here every Friday. Let me call you after the LSU after we blow the top off. I can't stand Brian Kelly, and Oregon sucks. I hate Oregon as well. I'll take a one point win over LSU. That would be good enough for me. I like Manjeet's idea. Let's blow the let's blow the doors off it. Okay, great. All right, thank you so much, Manjeet. Just blow them off. Come on, man. We'll, 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 right, guys. we'll talk right. to you soon. Fight on. You guys take care. I have a God bless. College football is even more exciting with some action on the line. And the games are even better when you're cashing in. And the voice of college football is the place to be to get the greatest value. Let's start with my picks. 75% against the money line, 58% against the spread. I've got a 40-year track record. In fact, in 2023, at $100 played per game, you would have netted over $9,300. And guess what? I'm just the warm-up act. Steve Merrill, our ace in the hole, show stopper from Wager Talk, six years with the voice of college football, over 30 years in the industry. Steve gives us analysis on all the big games, but you can't miss Steve's weekly under the radar pick, which went 21 and 5 against the spread the last two seasons. I repeat, 21 and 5 against the spread. You also get picks from some of our top analysts here at the Voice of College Football, including Steve Dace and Matt Zemick. Become a YouTube channel member or Patreon member for just $99 per month. Go to the main channel on YouTube, click join, and select the betting tier. Do the same thing on Patreon. Make 2024 a winner now.